Undertale by Toby Fox. Toriel and Sans quickly find out that they know each other from their pun sessions, so this lightens the darkening mood for Sans. Chara seems to have convinced Toriel to escort Chara all the way to Asgore so she doesn't need to face him alone. Papyrus pops into the mix, saying he had forgot to mention something, but Toriel realizes that Papyrus is Sans's brother quickly. After a trip to the house, some more puns, they arrive at Grillby's. A spear crashes through a window looking out of the diner. Undyne seems to have ran into the pair at the diner, wanting to take the human soul, the last one monsters need to be free. The former queen is not going to allow this child to die on her watch. Undyne says that the human she is protecting is the seventh human to fall, that they are not, that they are in fact the eighth, because Chara existed and shouldn't be discounted. I would be shook too. Toriel states that if Asgore wants this child's soul, he'll have to come get them himself. Undyne decides to not argue with Toriel and leaves to get Asgore. But Papyrus stops her from leaving with a friendly competition. Papyrus tells Sans to pick up a boulder, like that's gonna happen. Papyrus then tells Undyne to pick up the boulder. She happily accepts. But Toriel, being a boss monster, can one-handedly pick the boulder up with ease. When everyone gets distracted from that, Sans pulls Undyne aside, asking for a favor from her to not let the human out of their sight. Undyne accepts this favor, and now we have Undyne keeping sight on Chara at all times. Sans leaves so he can take a quick nap, just so Sans can talk to Glitched Sans for more information. Glitched Sans explains that he thought he could manipulate time, like using saves and resets. But when he tried, nothing happened. Then Frisk loaded the last save point, the fight in the Judgment Hall. His determination allowed him to remember each time the human reloaded their save. As time goes on, he noticed that the human was predicting his movements, his attacks, his everything. With each save loaded, the human survived longer and Sans grew more tired. After the human failed 536 times, Frisk finally hit their goal. As Sans was half dust, he snapped his fingers and left time completely inside of the save screen. Glitched Sans shows the ninth of his soul that survived and his body full of holes. It is then revealed that both Sans's don't have a full soul, and what Glitched Sands prefers to be named, Gino Sands. He states it's the name he deserves, not a name he wears proudly, a name of shame. Sands wraps up his talk with Gino Sands and talks to Glitched Frisk. Frisk tells their story to Sands, saying that Chara is the first person they spoke to. At the end, Frisk learned that they had the power to reset, they went ahead and used this power so much that both Chara and Frisk got bored. Chara then suggested to start killing, and Frisk accepted. As they continued resetting, Chara's influence got stronger and darker. After many timelines, Frisk finally finished the game, and when that happened, Chara took Frisk's body as their own, ended up on the save screen, meeting Geno Sans. Frisk knew immediately it was the first Sans they killed. Frisk says they are tired of hiding behind their guilt, and that is why the glitch they had finally disappeared. Sans with his empty skull comes up with a plan to fix all of this, getting Chara into the save screen. Frisk tells Sans not to go with that plan, because that is what Gino wants, and his plan isn't going to end how they want it to. Gino Sans sees something in the world and panics, sending Sans back into the world because it has something to do with Papyrus. After Frisk is honest with Gino and tells him that they told Sans enough and that there is a better way, he locks them up. Sans wakes up back into the world and runs out to see magic attacks flying, spears, and fire. It is Undyne and Toriel 
at a standstill. Undyne yells that the kid tried to stab Toriel, and that the kid and Papyrus are alone in Waterfall. With each step Sans makes, he teleports right past Toriel, rushing to Waterfall. Sans did not make it in time. Chara gloats in Sans's face with his failure to keep Papyrus safe. Even when he is keeping some of his memories, Sans decides to do something different than just killing them, talking, so he can learn more about his enemy. But as Toriel approaches, the timeline will need to be reset. That means Chara needs to die, but not with his scarf on.